is coming they'll have to catch up so uh, welcome everyone to today's uh, webinar or training really um, so a couple of things before we get started uh, I'm gonna be super conscious of time here uh, I'm, I know that you're really busy so the fact that you're here um, hi Tracy so Tracy just logged in as well nice to have you here um, we're just getting started Tracy you haven't missed anything just yet so um, yeah Brevity. I'm going to try and be as uh, concise as I can, giving you the information you need so you can go away and implement these campaigns. Um, if Obviously, if you have questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, probably best to do it at the end. That way, if you do have to get going, uh, you're free to go. Once you've got all the information, you can run. If you want to stay and have a chat afterwards, that's fine too. I'd make myself available to answer any questions uh, once we're done. So uh, with that being said, we are here today to discuss four postcard marketing strategies that are, will make you money in 2021. Um, we, I had a look, I dived into our data in behind the scenes here at Postpilot and had a look uh, to see what campaigns outside of the regular standard ones are uh, performing really well and so that we could share them. So these are actually gonna be quite advanced campaigns, um, so, uh, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, so yeah, with that being said, let's dive in. So before we actually get into the campaigns themselves, um, the foundational things still apply. Like these one, these campaigns that we're going to talk about um, coming up here uh, should be done as long as you have a few of these things in place, right? The simple campaigns that work, things like your first purchase campaign. That's, you know, anyone that signs up with your... Um, uh, not signs up, but per makes that first time purchase from your business. We're going to want to make a really good first impression and postcards are a wonderful way to do that. Um, we can, we see again, taken from statistics from within hundreds of campaigns that go out every day. Uh, you know, again, over the course of a 12 month period of time, if you're just the layering on these campaigns, the more touch points we have, um, the better the results. So again, if we start off from day one, with a good uh, first purchase uh, card going out and just makes that good impression. Uh, and again, it's not, probably not something a lot of your uh, competition is doing either. Win back campaigns, got to have the win back campaigns. In fact, uh, a couple of these advanced campaigns we're going to be talking about today are based on the, win, the basic premise of a win back campaign because it's the lowest hanging fruit. Um, you know, they've already purchased and they've just gone a bit quiet and it's that nudge to help them get them back in the game, get them back into, you know, your marketing ecosystem. Um, again, getting the basic ones in place is always important. And retail holidays, taking advantage of those. Um, you want to take advantage, you know, we've got, um, uh, what have we got coming up? Fourth uh, of July is coming up soon. Uh, and then of course, you know, the big ones, Black Friday and all those, we want to be able to take advantage of those and uh, make sure we get cards out for those. Because again, in our system, we always see, you know, there's holiday sales. It's got that, it's time sensitive. There's that fear of missing out. So, you know, usually really, really good results come from those postcard marketing campaigns. So again, I encourage you to make sure you've got those in place. Again, if you ever need help setting these up, we're here, just reach out, I'm happy to help. And uh, the other thing, make sure you automate them. If you have a successful campaign, make sure that we turn that into an automated campaign. Um, it always amazes me when, again, I'm working with, uh, with customers and we see, you know, they'll send out, say, a really good, let's take Black Friday, for example, a really good Black Friday campaign. And the results are fantastic. Well, we can take that campaign and obviously change the messaging slightly, but we can turn that into an automated campaign. There's no reason why you can't, if it's worked at a one time once, there's no reason it won't work throughout the year on an automated basis, hands-free. Again, we're going to talk about some of that coming up here now in a moment. Uh, and personalization, you know, making sure that you're speaking to your customers um, and based on maybe previous purchases and uh, using first names and uh, the dynamic name fields that we have available, uh, all those things we've seen help boost those conversions. So those are the basics uh, that we want to make sure that we have in place to get the most out of campaigns. And then once we've got those in place, this is where these next four campaigns uh, are going to really come into play. So let's uh, dive into the first one, and that is a VIP winback campaign. And as I mentioned, you know, winback campaigns are the lowest hanging fruit, but we can 
it's quite broad. A win back campaign I mean, just for me to throw that out there, that's quite a broad thing. Could have any number if you're, you know, if your store is five years old, let's say, um, if you were to set up a win back campaign and say anyone who hasn't purchased in 30 days, send them a card. I mean, that's a huge broad audience, right? So we really want to narrow it down. Um, and the more specific we can get, um, the more we can test and the better results we can see. And this is probably the lowest hanging fruit. And it's one of the most underutilized ones. Um, out there and as you can see here on the left these are actually this is actually a screenshot of a live campaign from a customer net right now uh, in the in in using postpilot and um, you can see 100 uh, to date this is an automated campaign so uh, to date it, there is 311 orders come in that's worth 40 that's been worth $45,000 plus in gen sales generated from the campaign uh, you can see the ROI is through the roof um, and it just works really well and the reason for that is that you know these are your these are your whales for to use a Vegas term uh, they're the ones that are going to spend the most with you and they've um, have proven to do this already it's not we're not theory we know that they're going to spend them they have spent the most but they've gone quiet on us so if we can get them back in it's not just the first time purchase which by the way these are the statistics for this is just for people that have um gone quiet with really good customers and then they bring them back in and this is just that first purchase back they're obviously um, statistically likely to make many purchases once you get them back into your, uh, again, all the different marketing mediums are able to kick back in, your retargeting ads, if you're using them, your emails, all that good stuff. So let's have a look at how we actually implement this, right? So how do we make this happen? So again, these, these are the actual a screenshot of the actual filters used on those campaigns for the results you just saw on the previous slide. And you can see, Basically, it's very simple to set up. It's just uh, four filters. Now, there's going to be some nuances to this, depending upon um, the frequency of purchases that your customers make and uh, the the um, the uh, shopping cart transactional value, um, the cart value of each transaction, which I'll talk about in just a second. But the basic principle is this: you select a last order date. So in this case, they were using. Um, is more than 180 days. So they want, they set it up so that uh, anyone who hasn't made a purchase in 180 days would trigger this card, uh, but is less than, last order date is relatively less than 365. So it's anyone, so between sort of six months to a year, right, would fit this category when they launched. And we then put in total spent is less than two, uh, is uh, less than. Uh, $2,000 and uh, total spent is greater than 500. So you can see they fall in between those two categories. Uh, you could also have number of orders in here, by the way. So you could do it based on, you know, have they made uh, six orders or more, right? It's again, this is where um, your each business is going to be slightly different. Um, and the average cost of goods or whatever it is that you're selling uh, is going to come into play too. But the point is, is whatever, however you define your best customers, we set the timer here. And again, 180 days is quite a long way out. Um, and uh, relevancy of time with the last order date is always very, very important. It's always a huge contributing factor to the success of a campaign. Um, so this is uh, this just shows you though, even if it's if they're six months old, once they've proven um, that they're willing to spend money or they're repeat buyers, um, the sales can be through the roof. And again, just to give you an idea, this campaign to date has generated 311 sales worth $45,000. Uh, so pretty successful campaign using this criteria right here. Um, so again, um, have a think about how the frequency of your sales cycle, like how often do people buy from you? If you're selling a big ticket item, it might be every six months. Um, but if you're selling something like, if you're in a supplement industry, uh, then your frequency is gonna be much higher, probably every 30 days for your best customers, assuming they buy a 30 day supply of something, uh, and then you want to um, make sure they continue those purchases. So, you know, if they've gone quiet for 90 days or more, um, then that's probably the time to, you know, time to send out a card. Um, you get the idea with this, I'm sure. Again, another uh, factor to pay attention to is the total amount spent. Um, again, how you define your VIPs is based on the average cart value for them. Uh, but we recommend always focusing on the 10, top 10 to 20% 
of your best customers to send these to. And again, this campaign can be an automated campaign. Once this is set up, it just runs. This It's running right now for this customer uh, and other customers that have used this campaign. So again, set up as automated, it's pretty much hands-free and uh, can just get the win back those best customers and bring them back into your um, marketing cycle. Oops. And then finally, card design and messaging. Um, the you know, with this, these are your best customers. So really make them feel important and exclusive and address that. And, um, you know, you know, you've been one of our best customers. We miss you, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and of course have still make sure you have some sort of scarcity in there. Don't let, don't miss out. Um, you can use our dynamic coupon codes. If you set this up as an automated campaign, um, so we can get them back in making sales and put them back into the rest of your marketing cycle. Um, so again, that works really well. Next campaign is the customers who don't open your emails. So if you've been in business for any amount of time over the years, you, you, you know that, uh, you know, it's getting in the inbox is hard enough. And then once we're actually in there, you know, if we're seeing, you know, 20 to 30% open rates, that's great, but that still leaves, you know, 70% of the people that aren't opening your emails. Well, we can actually, a great campaign is to retarget those people with a postcard if they haven't opened your emails. So now, there's two ways to do this. Obviously, a lot of our users here at Postpilot use Klaviyo, and if you do, that's great. If you don't, this will, you can still apply um, these this ta this campaign, um, but by just simply downloading the segment that we're going to talk about now and uploading it using a CSV file. Again, if you need help with any of that, just reach out. We'll be there to support you and help get that uh, implemented for you. Um, but again, basically the campaign, uh, if you were to set it up in Klaviyo, you can basically segment your, uh, segment your users by people who haven't opened your email um, in say the last 30 days. So as you can see here, that's the name of the segment that we've set up. Um, and by setting it up, you know, you save that inside of Clavia, and then you can come over here to Postpilot and set up the filters here too. So here below it, you'll see there's our uh, Postpilot filters, which is, um, you know, you select the Clavio segment, which is um, in this case for this illustration, did not open and did not open email. Uh, and then we put in some other buffers as well. So last order date is more than 30 days. So that's giving your emails time to, you know, time to do their thing or any other marketing. Um, but of course, if it's a one off you're sending it out. We want to do it in less than 180. Um, so they're filling, they've fallen within that category. That's a pretty good window to shoot for with this campaign. Um, and again, this can be an automated campaign that goes out that just um, allows you to, you know, make the most out of your uh, subscriber base. I mean, you know, you work so, we work so hard to get that um, you know, to get those subscribers and newsletter readers and everything else. Uh, so then just to have, you know, Google stick us in the promotional, <laughs> promotional inbox, it's heartbreaking, right? When, you know, these, uh, you know, these people need the stuff that you're selling and would probably likely buy. So this is a fantastic way. Um, and you can do this with all email campaigns, by the way, if you have a campaign, think about how you can create postcards to support those, uh, those campaigns, you know, uh, Again, I don't want to go on too much of a tangent here, but an abandoned cart sequence could work with this as well. So if you're running an abandoned cart, you let your, um, your abandoned cart sequence would go out to your customers in your email. And if they don't open the abandoned cart sequence, you could then send them the postcard. Or if they did open the abandoned cart sequence and you, uh, but they didn't purchase, you could send them like a Hail Mary postcard, uh, a last ditch effort, because you know the emails didn't work, so now maybe you were giving them 10% off to come back and finish their order, complete their order. You could offer them 20 or 30 just to try and you know acquire that customer. So there's lots of ways you can use this to, uh, um, to in, you know, they go hand in hand together, postcards and emails. So again, just for some messaging on here, you know, be direct 
you know, ask the, you know, ask the customer to come back, remind them of, you know, the, your, the promise of your brand and the products and what you stand for. Um, you know, it's a really good branding play because if they're not opening your emails and they're not engaged with the business, uh, you know, it's, a, it's just a really good way to re-indoctrinate them. Um, so those are, those are good. And of course, everyone loves a deal. So throw a deal in there as well, <laughs> if you want to. Um, it can't hurt, that's for sure. So that's, uh, yeah, anyway, great campaign there. This works really, really well. Again, um, something that people that do use it see great results from this as well. And again, it's just nice to be able to recoup uh, and get in front of the people that you've worked so hard to, 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 uh, to acquire. So uh, let me just do a quick check in here. Um, before we move on to the next campaign, how's everyone doing? Is the pace okay? Uh, am I going a bit too fast, too slow? Just give me a little, uh, give me a uh, little feedback in the chat box while I have a quick sip of water here. That'd be greatly appreciated. Okay, well, thank you. Everyone's being very, uh, just keeping an eye on the time here. Check the time. Marvelous, okay. Pace is good, everyone's enjoying it. Perfect, Marv, okay, great. And again, like I said, if we have questions and we're skipping over stuff, please feel free. We can always hop back to a slide. We can go deeper into detail. I just wanna be respectful of everyone's time. So, okay, next campaign. So this is the third of the four, uh, is a cross-selling campaign. Now, you're, we're all familiar with the classic example of uh, would you like fries with that, right? I think we've all heard that, unless you've never eaten at McDonald's before. Um, and they were the ones that really, you know, put this to put this to, to the test and proved that it worked really well. But there are, uh, you know, certain products that your customers are going to buy that um, makes them extremely likely to buy something else or another uh, product is going to be a complementary product to that, which means they're going to be much more likely to purchase it. It could be the same product, they're just rebuying it. Again, I mentioned the, uh, the uh, supplement example. So if someone's run out of protein powder, they would probably likely want to buy more after a certain amount of days. But not only that, maybe they would buy a shaker or a gym, you know, a shaker to shake up the protein powder or creatine, so on and so forth. If you are, you know, and the, another classic example is Amazon, right? We all shop on Amazon. Uh, and what do they do when we go through the checkout? Right? What's the what what is the first thing they do when you go and check out? As soon as you go to buy, there's a little box underneath that says, um, you know, you may also like XYZ or customers or who bought this, the thing you're about to buy, also bought this. Um, let's say for a perfect example for me the other day, I was buying some new um, a microphone and of course then they offered me a bunch of other stuff. Um, if you buy a GoPro, they're gonna offer you the stand and they're gonna offer you all the tripods and things like that. And they'll cross sell you on the other complementary products to support whatever it is you're buying. So we can do the same with our campaign. And, uh, the way to do that inside of Postpilot is we can look at the last order uh, purchased and then we can have a product title. Now, a couple of ways you can do this. You can use an exact match or it really depends on how you've uh, labeled your products inside of your, your store. Again, if you have specific questions, let me know. We can always help here to help with this. Um, but again, um, you're assuming you put your exact product title in here, um, we can see which product that they purchased last and then again, we can put the dates and times in here. So last order date was less than 180 days ago, uh, is more than 30. Okay, so it's between those two windows and we know that they've purchased that. So now you can look at your stats inside of your store and see, well, you know, when someone buys product X, what is the next best selling product or which other product is gonna complement that? And send them a card and say, hey, how have you enjoyed this product? Are you enjoying this? If you are, other customer, I, I mean, I would literally use the wording that Amazon uses because it obviously works. Uh, they've got about the biggest test amount of test data we could possibly uh, wish for. So, you know, uh, you send out and say, hey, hope you enjoyed your whatever it was they purchased. Um, you may also like this and then maybe put a testimonial from a customer on that product, the next product you'd like them to, to purchase on the card. Um, so again, this can be an automated campaign. It works on autopilot. The customers will receive a postcard as soon as they basically match this criteria. Um, and of course, you could consider it running it as a one-off campaign if you want to test things first. That's no problem. Uh, that's no problem either. 
So again, a good discounted offer works really well here. So if you're, because a lot of times that maybe they've made a one-time purchase and we're trying to get them to come make that second purchase. And again, statistically inside of Postpilot, we see a huge difference again uh, in campaigns when they've made purchases are greater than one. So if you can get them to become that, you know, a multi uh, purchase customer versus just a one-time buyer, uh, it's, it's going to dramatically increase the lifetime value. So that's, again, one of the reasons why this campaign specifically is so powerful. So again, really, really good one to, uh, to go and implement here. And again, offer a discount um, and be specific, you know, really, really tell them we, you know, you bought X, hope you enjoyed it. You may also like Y. And like I said, maybe have a customer testimonial on there. Uh, it's probably going to work really well and a coupon offer. And again, remember, if you're using automated campaigns, you can always use a dynamic uh, expiration date so that each time it goes out, uh, the person's expiration date will be unique to them. Again, it helps encourage that urgency, um, gets people off the couch to the computer and spending more money with you. And finally, number four is the birthday campaign. So, you know, everyone loves to be acknowledged on their birthday, don't they? If we, even though, even if you're like me and pretend like you don't, it's, it is nice, you know, to get a little something from a company you like. Um, and uh, it also works very well for you as a company. Uh, if you have a look here on the left, you'll see again, a screenshot from a live campaign where We've uh, each month, basically, if uh, they, the target people who have got birthdays in February um, and then you got one in March, April, May, and you can see the numbers for this are just incredible. Um, and these are coupon redemptions as well. Again, we show coupon redemptions. We also show the total ROI generated because sometimes people just don't enter the coupon code. Uh, so the coupon code is always going to be the conservative. Look at the numbers. Um, but again, here, I mean, the just the ROIs are absolutely incredible. And these going out to small segments of people. But I mean, each month it's an extra $2,000 uh, in sales, $3,000 in sales, 3,000, 2,000. I mean, just by simply uh, making an offer to someone on their birthday, acknowledging, their, um, acknowledging them on that day and, you know, sending out, the birth, sending out a, birthday card, a birthday offer to them. Um, now, I will say this. This is the trickiest one to set up out of all the campaigns, um, simply because, again, it's going to depend on what tool you're using and um, a, each uh, email service provider um, or uh, contact provider is going to be slightly different. But again, uh, Klaviyo actually offers a very specific help document here. Um, again, you can just look into their help docs. Uh, if you'd like, I can uh, provide that link to you after. Just send me a message. I can send you that link if you want to see how to set this up. Uh, but basically, uh, you that'll show you how to collect the data you need to do this. Um, again, if you're using something like Constant Contact or Active Campaign or any of these other email service providers, we can um, you can simply set up a uh, set up a segment if you, you look at how they suggest you collect this data because it's basically just a it's a custom field on the form when people are entering their name and email there's a custom field you can of course email and ask people for it uh, if you are uh, encourage people and say you know we send out gifts and stuff and and you know tell us when your birthday is or whatever um but the easiest way to do it is is to set up a form so when they and collect that data uh, and then once you have it you can see it's worth it because it's, uh, the the results are amazing so um again you can use the filters once this is set up you can segment users whose birthdays are on a specific month so in this case uh in the clavio contact is in the segment and then the birthday is the month of may you could do it that way and just send out um or you could get even tighter with this and you could say um birthday is in the next seven days so person's birthdays uh within seven days that way you know if you send out your cards at the beginning of the month and their birthday is not till the end of the month there's a little bit of a gap there. Again, from these results, you can see that that's still a perfectly acceptable way of doing it, and it's going to still work well for you. Uh, but again, if you want to tighten that up a little bit, make it a little bit more personalized, again, you can do it within, you can target them within a certain time window where their birthday falls, and that way your card's going to be timed perfectly. Again, we can then just trigger that segment inside a Postpilot, and it's just going to run on autopilot. Again, if you just want to upload the CSV of the birthdays uh, for that month, then once a month, you just come in, you upload the birthdays for uh, for May and hit send and you're and you're done. Okay. 
Um, so it's a little bit manual work on a monthly basis, but again, from what we see, it's, in, it's well, well worth it. Again, you do this as one-off campaigns, or you can set them up uh, as automated campaigns if you're using, uh, if you're, if you're, uh, if that's what you want to do. Uh, again, pretty sure you know how to write a birthday card, right? Happy birthday! <laughs> Here's a coupon on your birthday. Make it personal, make it festive, make it fun. Um, you know, and uh, and you should see great results from it. So those are the four. Those are the four we recommend. Um, but also as well, I just wanted to do a couple of extra things here where we can talk about uh, some mistakes I see people making on a, on a daily basis. And uh, the, um, there's, there's three big ones, basically. And the first one is uh, not trying to win those customers back uh, or trying to win customers back that basically that time period has been too long. So we'll do a win back campaign, but as I mentioned, at the start of this, you know, if you were to just, if you've been in business for five years and so, and you know, the people that bought with you first, if they've gone quiet, it could have been four years since they, or two years since they've uh, actually done any business with you. And the likelihood is they've probably forgotten about your business. So uh, if you want to get the biggest bang for your buck, what you want to do is start with the most recent win back campaigns and then slowly layer them in piece by piece. So start with a 90 day win back campaign, then 180 day win back campaign, you know, and then maybe scale up to 360. Um, Cause after that, you will start to see diminishing rates of return. Again, it depends on how much your uh, customer's worth to you, because again, if you sell something very high end, um, if you were to say, send to, pe send to people that hadn't engaged with your business for a year, over a year, um, let's say you send to a hundred people, if you've got a, a high end product, a uh, high value product with high price point, then it may be worth trying. Cause even if you just get one sale from it, it's going to be a successful campaign. Um, but again, if you're selling something that's, you know, in the 20 to $30 range consistently, $40 protein stuff, it's, you know, you want to keep it focused on the recency, uh, smaller segments, more recent, are always going to work better, are always going to do better for you. Um, sending too late. So this is a, this is a, <laughs> this is more uh, from a, something I see is where not giving enough time for your cards to land. And most importantly, time for your customers to actually read them, make a decision whether they actually want to come back and take advantage of whatever the offer is. Um, so again, as you probably know, or hopefully, you know, uh, here at Postpilot, we have a, you know, four to six day delivery window, but we do use while we use first class mail for everything, it still is the United States Postal Service. It's completely out of our control <laughs> as it goes to them. Um, and around the holidays, you know, they can get a little bit slow. So if you are running, let's say you wanted to run 4th of July Independence Day campaign, then, you know, you want to um, allow at least 10 days before you want it to land. Um, and again, if you're going to put a give people time on a coupon code, make sure you give them enough time because uh, think about your own uh, habits when you check the mail. Uh, you know, it may not be the person that you're targeting. It may be the person's wife or the person's husband that checks the mail. Or in my case, it will be my four year old who checks the mail and I won't see it for a week. In fact, the postcard will probably get used as uh, Barbie's doormat for, for a week until I find the mail strewn around the house. So it's a big <laughs> mail hunt. Anyway, you get the idea, right? You need to give them a little bit of time. It's not like an email that they see instantly in their inbox and you can send again if they don't. Postcards have a little bit more time on them. So again, give them at least two weeks when it lands. They need at least two weeks to uh, uh, take advantage of whatever promotion it is. 30 days is probably a little bit better, but two weeks is okay. Uh, nothing less than that. And then don't forget to measure. So again, coupon codes are great. We love coupon codes because it helps you give a, um, you know, a very accurate uh, um, tracking method for your card, but make sure that you use a unique coupon code for your cards. Um, one of the reasons we see a little bit of a difference between um, sales generated and coupon codes is because often what happens is they'll send out, you'll send out a campaign, you'll say 20% off, then they go to the website and the same offer is on the website. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but just understand that attribution wise, the postcard got them to the website, but because 
there's the offer on the website, they don't need to then enter the coupon code into the site. So while, again, the, the, your card worked, your campaign worked, um, again, they're probably not going to attribute the, the right code to that. So again, look at both your numbers. Also something else, you know, a coupon code is really important if you're doing a first time campaign, because again, there's probably your mar other marketing mediums are going to be helping support that first time customer purchase and get them to become a, a repeat customer. Um, so again, the code's important for that one. But again, if you're doing a win back campaign, uh, the overall sales generated is probably more important uh, number to look at to uh, you know, gauge the success of a campaign. So uh, those are the tips. And then finally, if we have time, we do, uh, we'll wrap this up here, but I wanted to give you a little bonus tip here before we do uh, some questions. And that is uh, consider using QR codes on your cards. Um, it's something a few customers use and they've used them really, really well. But basically, if you're not a, if you're not familiar with QR codes, basically it's this little funny cryptic image here. Uh, and it's simply just a piece of text that's turned into an image and that's it. And it can be read by your phone. Um, They've been around forever, but they were a bit cumbersome to use before you had to download an app that read them and so on and so forth. But now, as long as you've got a fairly new phone, uh, your customers have anything in the last couple of years, all they have to do is hold the camera in front of it and the camera automatically reads it and it'll redirect them to wherever you want through that code. Um, so the nice thing is it's convenient for them, but what's also pretty cool is that inside of Shopify, you can actually build in your discount and your coupon code into the QR code. So uh, if you have a look down here in the bottom left, you can see here that we've, uh, let, you could use uh, uh, the URL you'd use is your shop URL, then you put your discount and your discount code, and then that will automatically apply the coupon code to the customer's checkout, uh, cart checkout. Now, I think there is some, it's, it's not, it can be a little funky sometimes, uh, but again, it's definitely worth trying. Uh, I think this is a great idea. Now, the only thing is, is they may not know that the discount has been applied. Uh, so you may want to use some copy on the card that says scan this to have it automatically applied to checkout. Um, something like that, again, be very clear about the intentions. And uh, again, you could direct them to a specific product with a, a discount for that product. So this would work well with maybe um, any of your, you could do a birthday campaign. You could even put, but you could do other things as well. You get really creative with this. So like you could embed this to a video. In fact, if you scan this right now, um, you will go to a little video, which uh, hopefully you'll enjoy. So you'll go off to, uh, you, if you scan that now, that will take you somewhere and you can see how it works. Um, take your phone out, scan it on the screen. It should just pick it up and send you off there. And uh, you could easily create a birthday message for your customer. So, hey, happy birthday. Thanks. We appreciate you so much. And create a little landing page for them and then link them to the discount or the coupon code. Again, it depends how uh, involved in, 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 in your marketing, uh, in your process and content creation you want to be. But you could really send them anywhere with that. Uh, but again, get creative. But bake in the discount codes already, uh, send them to a specific product. So you could, again, the cross selling campaign, this would work really, really well for. And uh, yeah, it should do you, uh, it'll do you great because they've already got the, you know, hey, you bought this, check this product out. They can scan it, go straight to the product and they've already got the discount code in there. So attribution would work really well with that as well. The only sad downside is some people wouldn't scan it, right? If you've got a slightly older demographic as your, uh, as your customers, probably like, my mum, she ain't going to be scanning her QR code, <laughs> but she will buy. She is a spender. Uh, my wife will do both, by the way. She will spend <laughs> a lot and probably scan a QR code. So you'll just have to judge that for yourself. But that's it from me, guys. Um, that wraps up today's thing. We kept it about half an hour. What are we at? 3.36. Yeah, we're a little late starting. So, uh, of course, if you need any extra help, just uh, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, you can contact me at tom at postpilot.com or just feel free to reach out through our little support on every page of the site. Um, and yeah, I hope, you, uh, I hope you enjoyed it today. I'd love to stick around and have a chat if you have any questions. Um, please feel free to fire them off and, uh, and yeah, give me some feedback. Uh, let me know what you thought, questions, what campaigns you're working on, uh, what successful campaigns you've had.
Well, I'm going to grab, we'll give you a chance to do that. I'm going to grab a little uh, thing of water here. Okay, Mark asked about dynamic coupon codes. Um, so while the coupon code itself is not dynamic, the, the date can be dynamic. By the way, we are feature release, the feature release very, very soon. And I mean, very soon, you're gonna be able to use dynamic coupon codes on all of your cards. But for now, um, the code itself, the time, the time stamp, um, so expires on the 31st of May, uh, that's dynamic. So if you set that to be a month from when they receive the card, each person will have a unique code on their card. E so shouldn't say code, unique uh, date on their card. And, uh, and yeah, so that it's custom to them. And that way you can still set up automated campaigns and still use that fear of missing out, that scarcity to help encourage people uh, to, to take some action. <laughs> Uh, okay, Anthony asks, can you print or current resident above the name? I'm not quite sure uh, the question, Anthony. Can you just, uh, if you can just rephrase that for me, I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. Happy to help though. Um, clarif just clarify that for me. Okay, Drew asks, what do you think about using a series, like sending multiple cards to the same customer? Um, yeah, absolutely. You, it, it's, it's been, we've seen in our statistics that multiple touch points, the more touch points you have, um, the better those campaigns will work. Because uh, again, the first couple of touch points uh, may not be the right timing. Again, they may not see it. It's not the same as email. Right. If you hammer, hammer, hammer home email, I think we've all been on the receiving end of a uh, horribly aggressive email campaigns. Whereas postcard marketing, you know, uh, I never saw, I've never signed up for a McDonald's mailing list of any description, but somehow they send me coupons every single month. <laughs> they never get used, but it also doesn't annoy me. Like I just, it's okay. I recycle. So that's fine. Um, and so, yeah, don't, I wouldn't worry uh, about over, over sending. If anything, people are uh, overly cautious, I would say. And yeah, series of cards uh, will work great. And again, if, you know, uh, assuming that you're doing a great job of supporting your customers, uh, you know, they'll be glad to get a deal. They like it. People, you know, at the end of the day, what's the, um, what's the old adage? Uh, we hate the people hate to be sold, but they love to buy. And so if we can do it in a nice way, then there's no reason you should worry about sending multiple cards. Okay, Anthony, I'm reading your question now. Um, da -da -da. Oh, okay. So if the recipient has moved, Uh, that's a good question, Nancy. I'm not sure about forwarding addresses. I know that um, we have an address verification uh, process. So it, it'll check with the database. So if they've, um, if there's, if there is an address that it can be forwarded to, it'll automatically get forwarded there. If it can't be delivered, um, we're told uh, there's a, again, we can, we cross reference all that. So again, we, it says failed address verification, which we put it through. Uh, and if it fails that we just simply don't send it at all. Um, and so and that's the thing again, you would need, uh, you can also add a return address for any of those ones that do pop slip through and come back. Um, so again, I think hopefully that answers your question. If it doesn't, again, maybe hit me up afterwards and I can uh, get a bit more details on uh, what it is you're asking. Okay, cool. <laughs> you got it. Great. Um, yeah, so we do have the address verification in process. We, and uh, you'll just be added, the credits get added back to your account at that point. Okay, thank you. Very kind feedback here. I'm glad everyone enjoyed it.
Uh, Mark said, using active campaign, uh, can I do the birthday campaign? Uh, yeah, you know what, active campaigns are really advanced uh, email marketing software, so I'm sure they have ways of, uh, you know, targeting it. But basically, guys, no matter what you're using, uh, most auto email auto responders have uh, custom forms. Like, so for the, for the opt-in form, you can add a field to that. Um, so you could just add date of birth. That's all it is, date of birth field. Um, uh, into your into into the process and then you can collect those dates of birth and then that allow you and if you again if you're using a third party outside of Clavio, uh, we by the way we are going to have more integrations coming um, very very soon uh, it's part of our next development cycle we're going to be focusing a lot on that so uh, yeah stay tuned for that hopefully we've got some cool features coming your way uh, but for now again if you're on out and uh, a service outside of Clavio, you can simply uh, create a segment of people that have birthdays in uh, March and download that. Same thing applies if you wanted to say people that have opened or unopened emails. You could go in, select everyone that hasn't opened an email from me in the past, uh, whatever, 45 days, um, and then just download that. All the email service providers will allow you to download that in a CSV and then you can upload it to Postpilot and you're off to the races. All right, how are we doing here? All right, guys, so, well, if there's no other questions, then I will start to wrap things up and uh, I'll let everyone get on with their day. All right, lots of thank yous coming in. Awesome, it was, well, it was a pleasure. I enjoyed it, uh, glad you did too. And uh, we're gonna do lots more of these. So by the way, if you have feedback and you would like um, topics that you'd like us to cover in these sort of short 30 minute training sessions like this, we'd love to hear from you. Please let us know and uh, yeah, we'll put on, we can do these monthly or every couple of weeks if it's that frequency works and you enjoy them and you want to sh um, get the most out of, again, your postcard marketing. Uh, we can go into more um, tactical stuff about, um, you know, how to tactical tactics inside of, uh, inside of, uh, post, inside of post pilot itself, or we can talk strategy in general terms of direct response marketing, you know, how to improve the copy on your cards, or we could talk about, um, um, you know, what to do at checkout and different campaigns and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being here again. Um, greatly appreciate your time. Um, I know there's lots of other things you could have been doing today. So the fact that you spent it here with me, I greatly appreciate. And uh, I hope you found this valuable. I hope it served you. And uh, we look forward to supporting you here in uh, moving forward with your direct response and postcard marketing campaigns. All right. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your weekend. Talk soon. Bye-bye.